To start the center fuselage build, the first step in the manual is going to be your rear spar. So this is a fairly straightforward assembly. Um, the only thing to keep in mind is you're going to Clico everything together and also install your AN3 bolts ahead of time, but not torque them down. Um, this will just make sure that everything is well aligned uh, before you start riveting. Um, the only thing is if you are installing the parachute option, you'll leave out the top rivet on each side. Um, that's going to interfere with the cable coming down into the, uh, uh, the bolt down here later on. So you'll leave out just this top rivet right here until you've got your canopy uh, cables installed later on, and then you'll install that rivet later. So, all right, let's rivet this together and move to the next step. For the next page of the manual, uh, it's very straightforward. On my side of the spar here, there's just the two plates to rivet on. There's nothing too special about those. Um, when you fit your autopilot brackets in, uh, you don't actually even have to click them to, into position for the two outer ones. Just uh, get your bolts and install the, the top one because uh, you're going to end up pulling those clicos out later to uh, install these ribs here. Uh, so same thing with these ribs, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, the two center ones sometimes take a little bit of maneuvering to get over to the center channel. Uh, what I like to do for that is Clico on the bottom skin that actually is going to go on the center channel later on anyway, so that the channel is locked into position and then maneuver the ribs kind of, you know, a little bit here and there to get them to fit really nicely. Um, other than that, I like to start with the two center ribs and then work outwards with these other ribs. Um, that just makes it easier to access with the rivet gun, similar to how we did it on the wing. Um, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, just don't forget that the autopilot brackets are inside of the main spar and inside of the top aileron autopilot bracket. Um, so we're ready to move to the next step. For this next step, it's fairly straightforward. Um, basically, keep in mind that all of these components go to the inside of your gear channel here. Um, the bottom four rivets on both sides, um, here, here, and on the same on the other side, need to be countersunk, um, and the rivet goes from the inside out. Um, that makes sure that when we install our gear leg, there's no interference uh, on its way in here. So double check to make sure your holes were countersunk. There were a couple that needed to be done on this one. The rest were already done by the factory. Um, and the remaining rivets can be done from the outside or whichever direction is easiest. Um, in addition to that, keep in mind that the, um, on these channels, there's a notch on one side and the notch faces towards your main spar. That kind of helps you, if you don't have your part number still on there, then that kind of helps you orient everything. Um, the jigs go in order from three holes four holes, we have the jig with five holes already on our rear spar, so that kind of helps you also keep a order of which uh, jig goes where. It just kind of counts from number of holes working from the front of the plane to the back. So with that, we're ready to move to the next step. So for these next couple steps, um, there's a couple things that you can do in order to kind of make the process a little bit easier. Uh, one, before you install these ribs, or any of these ribs, Install this autopilot bracket to your rear spar first, uh, just because then you have a nice, clear, easy access of it. Uh, same thing with this autopilot bracket. Go ahead and install this before you've installed this rib. Uh, in addition to that, same thing with all the seat belt brackets. So if you rivet these on to these ribs, um, these ones are less important, but these two especially, uh, if you rivet those onto the ribs first, then you don't have to worry about trying to get into, into that space. The rest of it is fairly straightforward. Just uh, shoot the 3.2 millimeter rivets in to hold the ribs, the rear spar, um, all together. And uh, we're ready to move to the next step. For the next two steps, um, for the first listed step in the manual, uh, we're essentially kind of going to skip that page until the next step. So that shows some illustrations basically of the, lo the location of uh, these triangles 
that reinforce your uh, main spar carry through to these ribs and uh, these side channels that reinforce your side skins. Um, however, if you install the Clecos onto them at that step earlier on, and then you're gonna have Clecos in the way basically trying to install these ribs. So as you can see here, this is the proper orientation of everything. Um, so don't rivet that first page with the exception of these two small channels here. You can rivet those, I've got them riveted right now but then you're gonna to wanna to Clico everything uh, as the manual shows. And so now we can move forward with riveting. Uh, keep in mind, we're not gonna rivet any of the rivets on the underside of this uh, outside channels because the outside side skins have to wrap around and, and use that to uh, attach later on. Also, the far forward line of rivets on the underneath, we're not gonna rivet those either. So uh, we're ready to rivet this now. Okay, so now that we have the uh, floor channels riveted onto the bottom skin, uh, before we install our top skin, we're going to want to install the installation. So I have quarter inch thick um, closed cell foam here. Uh, it has an adhesive back. Uh, I really recommend getting a closed cell foam if you do need to order more than what the kit provides. Uh, it's, it's just a little bit denser, it's still very lightweight, and it gives just that slight edge on, uh, on insulation and noise isolation properties. So. Uh, always keep in mind, you want to check that it is flame retardant and it doesn't, you know, catch on fire. So whatever you order, make sure to, you know, light a little corner of it on fire or something and double check just to make sure that you're not setting a, uh, uh combustible material all over inside your plane. Um, a couple things to make note of, dimple the sides of this top skin here and, um, that way you don't have to dimple it later on and, and it just makes it a little easier. Um, in addition to that, the hole in the center here and here, this is where your transponder antenna is going to go. And if you plan to use this location, uh, make sure to leave a clearing in your foam so that you can firmly mount that transponder antenna. And also on the top skin here, go ahead and enlarge your hole just slightly so that you're able to access the two bolts um, that are on the back of that transponder antenna. Um, it's easier to do it now before the skin is on than afterwards. And uh, most of the blade style transponder antennas have two studs that come up through and you'll need to access the nuts through the top here to secure it. So always remember if you are gonna cut out a little bit of material, keep your edges rounded so there's no stress points to cause a rip or a tear and um, keep the hole as small as you can in order to be able to access what you need to access, um, but don't remove excess material than that. So, and one last thing to keep in mind is you can see I stopped my insulation at this point because there's so many rivets up here on the top skin uh, that for the rudder pedals that it's better just to leave the insulation off from that area. Uh, we've already got it on the underside um, bottom skin, so it should be fine. And also keep in mind, it is optional to insulate both the top and the bottom skin. It's gonna be better, it's gonna add a little bit of weight. Uh, so you kinda have to decide on the trade-offs you wanna make for what works best for you and, and your personal uh, build process here. So we are now ready to rivet on this bottom skin, making close note of the rivets to leave off. And um, then we'll move to the next step. All right, so these next couple steps are fairly straightforward. Um, when you install these control uh, brackets here, uh, you'll need to use a wedge tool to get these rivets without you know, going diagonal and having the head not contact the surface nice and flat. Uh, so keep that in mind. Also, through this step, and actually for a, a little while here, I leave off these side panels from both sides because when we install the um, control uh, rod there. It'll just be easier to install it, make sure everything's fitting properly, um, and we can always install these later on. It's not an issue right now. So um, with these, uh, the best way to do these is to install the riv nuts onto all of these components before you've riveted them into place. Um, it's just a lot easier to work on, on the table rather than trying to upsize uh, these holes and then install the riv nuts vertically. Uh, you could do it either way, it's no issue. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind if you do do it off of the plane, 
um, this rib nut, this rib nut, and the same on my side over here, um, goes through both this, these channels and the uprights. So don't rivet that until, or riv nut that until it's um, as you see here. So yeah, like I said, either way is, is fine. I find it easier to at least clear drill them uh, before you've installed them all onto, uh, onto your bottom skin. So we're ready to move on to the next step now. Okay, so the next step that uh, we're gonna need to get done here is we need to mate our bottom floor skin to our main spar carry through and uh, back from there with the rest of the assembly that we built earlier. Um, in order to do that, the best way to do it is to tilt the entire assembly onto its side and use a little bit of a shim here to help stop this uh, floor skin from wanting to swing out or um, the assembly tilting and rolling this way. Uh, as you can see here, we're not gonna yet rivet the uh, uh, undercarriage channel here because there's a, a plate that covers it and that'll be way later after the undercarriage is installed the main gear leg there um, so a couple things to make note of is the main spar carry through rivets are all four millimeter stainless steel rivets and as you install each one you'll want to use a con corrosion inhibitor um, also, you don't want to clear drill these holes at all. So these are by far the most important holes. You want to make sure everything lines up with lots of clicos up and down your, your carry through there to make sure that these holes are all lining up perfectly and then get those rivets to pop in without having to clear drill them. Um, and so other than that, this process is fairly straightforward. Um, you'll need to mount in your uh, aileron stop brackets, your elevator stop bracket here. Uh, there's a couple extra holes here that we'll, we'll plug with four millimeter rivets in a bit. Um, at this stage, because I've already got the whole thing tilted up onto its side, I like to install this uh, bottom floor skin back here as well. Uh, you don't have to at this stage. We can wait until we've mated our rear fuselage to this assembly. Um, but if you do right now, you'll want to make sure to leave off a couple rivets at the far uh, trailing edge so that we're able to get this skin to uh, go down below our rear fuselage skin. Um, either way is fine. Uh, I just like to do it now while I've got access to it. And uh, also your uh, autopilot bracket here, your elevator autopilot bracket, the manual currently has it shown upside down. Make sure to get the proper orientation so that the two holes are face down. Uh, I'll include a picture of it up there so you can see. And as always, when you're clecoing these assemblies together, make sure to cleco uh, critical components first, such as your rear spar, your undercarriage, um, your uh, main gear mount channel here, and everything. Uh, so that way the alignment is properly aligned to the critical structural components. Um, so once we've got this all riveted together, we're going to remove these clecos so I can put it face down on the table again and we'll move to the next step. So now that we've got our bottom uh, floor skin here joined up with our rest of the assembly that we built a little earlier, uh, we can now install our rudder pedal assembly. Um, this process is fairly straightforward. Uh, you'll want to start by riveting down your uh, your pedal channels here and the reinforcement channels and then rivet just the bottom side of each of the brackets and make sure that they're lining up the two brackets are lining up perfectly with each other you don't want any uh, you know m misalignment like this because then the bushings won't fit in properly um, and once you've got that part of the assembly complete uh, we can then clico the top retaining plates into position and just check to make sure that you've got a uh, fairly smooth motion. Uh, if you don't, it's most likely because a little bit of the powder coat is caught up under the bushing and causing it to bind. Um, so double check that and make sure that the area around the bushing where the bushing contacts the pedal rod here uh, is smooth and free of any kind of obstruction or adhesives or anything like that. Uh, you shouldn't need any lubrication on these. They should they should uh, rotate freely. Uh, and you really do want to avoid using any kind of lubrication, especially grease here, because 
if you do grease these and you're putting your feet here and dirt slowly gets in here, uh, it'll build up and cause binding later on. So if you are going to lubricate them, use a dry lube, a Teflon dry lube, graphite light dry lube, uh, something like that. And the last thing to double check uh, with your assembly here, first of all, our um, top bolts, we're going to leave those just uh, uh, installed loosely. They're not uh, tightened down yet. That's because these are going to connect to our rudder cables a little bit later on. And you do want to put your uh, rod ends in here with the grease fitting facing up so you can grease them. It's, it's going to be difficult to access in the future. Uh, greasing them now is your best bet or before we've got uh, much more of the assembly put together. Um, and that's just going to be for, for ease of access now. Later on, no matter which way you orient these, it's going to be a little difficult to get grease into them. So the last thing is you want to make sure that the flanges, uh, these components here, clear all of the other components of the internal assemblies here uh, by at least three millimeters, and they should overlap by at least 10 millimeters when they contact each other. So it's, it's a little bit of a, of a you know, trial and error, getting it to fit properly. Um, you know, Sling does a good job. The parts are usually cut perfectly, but if you need to just slowly file down just a millimeter or two off of the edges here to avoid any uh, interference there, then that's okay as long as, like I said, you've got uh, 10 millimeters of overlap on this component here. So now that we've got that done, we're ready to uh, move to the next step.